Welcome back everyone. My today's lesson is about priapism. To start from definition of priapism, priapism is a persistent penile erection at least four hours in duration that continues beyond or is unrelated to sexual stimulation. Typically, only the corpora cavernosa is affected. When we see the types of priapism, there are three types. The first one is ischemic or venoclusive or low flow priapism, which is characterized by little or no cavernous blade flow, and cavernous blade guys are hypoxic, hypercapnic, and acidotic. And the corpora are rigid and tender to palpation in the case of ischemic priapism. Whereas the non ischemic or arterial or high flow priapism, which is caused by unregulated cavernous arterial inflow, typically the penis is neither fully rigid nor painful. There is often a history of antecedent trauma resulting in cavernous artery corpora cavernosa fistula. The third one is stuttering or intermittent priapism, which is a recurrent form of ischemic priapism with painful direction with uh, intermittent periods of attack. When we see how to differentiate ischemic and non ischemic from each other clinically and laboratorically, uh, stuttering type of priapism is a subtype of ischemic, which is intermittent. Ischemic priapism is mainly characterized by fully rigid penis with penile pain and most of the time it is associated with hematologic abnormalities and there is no history of trauma in the case of ischemic priapism most of the time. Whereas in the case of non-ischemic uh, priapism, the penis is not fully rigid and it is not painful and most of the time it is associated with perineal trauma. And in the case of ischemic, which is a low flow priapism, there is a venous obstruction, whereas in the case of non ischemic, it is increased arterial flow, there is no obstruction. And ischemic priapism is often caused by medications induced or related to sickle cell disease, whereas, as I, as I have said, uh, non ischemic priapism is mostly caused by trauma. When we see the etiology of priapism, the most common cause of priapism in children is sickle cell disease, which is characterized by predominance of sickle cell hemoglobin. As many as 27.5% of children with sickle cell disease develop priapism at some time. And the, pre and the priapism is generally related to a low flow state, secondary to sickling of red blood cells within the sinusoids of the corpora cavernosa during the normal erection, resulting in a venous stasis. This situation results in decreased local oxygen tension and the pH, which potentiates further stress and the sickling. Priapism typically occurs during sleep when mild hypoventilatory acidosis decreases oxygen tension and the pH in the corpora. There is typically significant corporal enlargement with sparing of the glans penis, and if the spongiosum is involved, voiding may also be impaired. When we see the evaluation of a child who presents with acute priapism, which is a medical emergency, we should have to check complete blood count and the serum chemistry. On CBC, we should have to check for cell counts, all cell lines, because leukemia is one of the causes for priapism in children. We should have to check that. And if the sickle cell status is not known previously, hemoglobin electrophoresis should be performed. In some cases, corporal aspiration is performed to distinguish between high flow and the low flow state based on the pH and the oxygen the carbon dioxide content of the blade in the corpora. Other causes of low flow priapism include sildenafil ingestion and leukemia. Regarding treatment of priapism, in priapism, secondary to sickle cell disease, medical therapy includes exchange transfusion, IV hydration, alkalinization of the blade, pain management with morphine and oxygen administration. Meanwhile, concurrent intracavernous treatment beginning with corpora aspiration and the irrigation with sympathomatic agents such as phenylephrine is recommended. If irrigation and the medical therapy are unsuccessful, corporal glandular shunt should be considered. For stuttering types of priapism, administration of an oral alpha adrenergic agent which is such as pseudoephedrine once or twice daily is first line therapy. If this treatment is unsuccessful, an oral beta agonist such as terbutaline is recommended. A gonadotropic releasing hormone analog plus flutamide is recommended as a third line therapy. So, for stuttering type of priapism, the first line is alpha adrenergic agent with 
ሲዶፈሪን ዘ ሰከንድ ላይንስ ቤታ ጎንስት ዊስተር ቡታሊን እንደ ሰርድ ላይንስ ጎናሮትሮፊ ሪዝን ሆርሞን ዊስ ፍሉታማይድ ሎንግ ተርም ፎሎ አፕ ኦፍ አዳልት ትሪትል ፎር ሲክል ዲዚስ አስ ቺልድረን ሾውስ ዳት ሳቲስፋክተሪ ሪክታል ፋንክሽንስ ኢንቨርስሊ ሬትድ ቱ ዘ ፔሸንትስ ኤጅ አዘ ኦንሴት ኦፕ ፕሪአፒዝም እንደ ዱሬሽን ኦፕ ፕሪአፒዝም when we see treatment of non ischemic or high flow preapism this one is most commonly follows perineal trauma such as straddle injury that results in laceration of the cavernous artery typically the aspirated blood in this case is bright red and it looks like that of arterial blood color doppler ultrasonography of and demonstrate the fistula and the preapism in this case is most of the time it resolves spontaneously if it doesn't resolve spontaneously and geographic embolization is indicated this is all about a summary regarding preapism thank you for watching